Hi, good evening. Welcome to the course on LTE Fundamentals for Industry Professionals. Let us divide this course into four broad topics that is Introduction to LTE, Physical Channel Structure, Channel Names and Terminology, Operations and Procedures. Introduction to LTE The main objectives of this particular section would be describing the TGP, 3GPP technology evolution, listing out the key performance requirements for LTE, describing the evolved UMTS network architecture, describing the EUTRAN and NAS protocol structures, explaining the connection states with EPS and EUTRAN. This particular slide lists out the evolution of 3G networks over the period of time through 3GPP releases that is spread across from release 99 to release 9. 3GPP has laid down its first release 99 for WCDMA standard which is based on 5 MHz bandwidth and this particular release aims at providing the voice services and data services for over the speed of 384 kbps in both downlink and uplink when it comes to data over the period of time it could not meet out the network demands with the increasing downlink and with the increasing downlink and uplink data traffic so it has released release 5 which is aimed at improving the broadband downloads and addressing the network needs in the down in the downlink side so with this release the downlink capacity has improved from 384 kbps to 1.8 to 14.4 megabits per second whereas the uplink speed remains the same that is 384 kbps after the release 5 3gpp has released release 6 to address the broadband speeds in upload in uplink as well See now the uplink speed has improved till 5.7 Mbps. Then came release 17 with main motive to 2x the data capacity, 2x the voice capacity that is 28 Mbps and in the downlink and 11 Mbps in the uplink. With release 8, 3GPP has introduced multi carrier technology where we can add one more carrier of equal capacity. For the same connection that is called as multi carrier technology, it has doubled the data rates both in uplink and downlink, where we would be able to get downlink 42 Mbps and uplink 11 Mbps. In release 9, it has further increased the capacity of the network both in downlink and, up, downlink and uplink, which is around 84 MB Mbps and beyond for a channel of 10 MHz and 23 mbps and beyond for a channel of 10 megahertz so after this it has 3g technology has come to an end and 3gpp stopped giving out the releases and standards for the technology where we got much better technology called as lte which stands for long term evolution along with along with release 8 3GPP has released standard for first LTE technology which leverages the new wider and TDD spectrum. In the initial release, downlink speeds were around 73 Mbps to 150 Mbps and in uplink it is 36 Mbps to 75 Mbps. The bandwidth that will be utilizing by LTE is from 10 MHz to 20 MHz whereas WCDMA channel is of 5 MHz. The key enabler of LTE is actually something called as OFDM, which stands for Orthogonal Frequency Division Multiple Access. In this particular slide, we have just shown till release 18, sorry, release 10. We have 4G standards till release 14, which was given by 3GPP. And to comment on 3GPP, 3GPP stands for Third Generation Partnership Project. Let us see 3GPP evolution terminology. 
long term evolution which stands for LTE it's actually the evolution of 3GPP UMTS terrestrial radio access technology which in short form in short form we call it as EUTRA basically both the terms LTE and EUTRA is used interchangeably then we come to something called as evolved packet system which is EPS it's actually system architecture evolution of LTE with a packet core network and integration to LC 3GPP and non 3GPP networks basically an EPS system consists of radio access network which is evolved UTRA network in short form it is EUTRA and a core network architecture it is evolved packet core EPC so in a, in a nutshell an EPS system is, subs, is divided into two parts one is radio access network and another is core network radio access network is called as EUTRAN and core access network is called as EPC let us see what are the performance targets that 3GPP has set to itself while giving out the standards for LTE first one that is scalable transmission bandwidth up to 20 megahertz all the previous technologies that is WCDMA, CDMA, 2G, GPRS, HSPA, HSUP, whatever it is every standard has its has a sta has a fixed bandwidth but whereas 3GPP try to address a scalable bandwidth up to 20 megahertz using one single standard in, in LTE and the second one is the downlink and uplink performance should be better than release 16 HSPA HSPA stands for high speed packet access and in the downlink in LTE there will be a 2x2 MIMO terminal with downlink spectrum using that it is aimed to get the downlink spectrum efficiency 2 to, time, two to 4 times more than release 6 HSPA whereas in the uplink side in the same single access using the same single TX antenna technology uplink spectrum efficiency is expected to improve 2 to 3 times more while coming to coverage it aims at good performance up to 5 kilometers with a slight degradation up to, up to 30 kilometers for a single cell while coming to mobility 3GPP has aimed for optimized for low speeds less than I mean the network is optimized to big to give uh, better performance for more for low mobile speeds less than 50 km per hour and to provide mobility support that is the handover should be supported for the speeds of the vehicles traveling at 350 km per hour as well and LTE aims at using advanced transmitting transmit schemes and multiple antenna technologies the transmit schemes here refers to OFDM technology and multiple antenna technology which is commonly known as MIMO that is multiple input multiple output and finally LTE is aimed at existing or coexisting with 3G or 3GPP and non 3GPP systems as well as the existing 3G network as well sorry there is a typo here which is 3GPP and non 3GPP let us see the key differences between 3G and 4G networks in 3G the network is called as UMTS and the technology is called as WCDMA whereas in 4G it is called as SAE and the technology is called as LTE in 3G there is centralized radio resource management which is RNC based here it is distributed radio resource management which is inode B based there is nothing called as something called as radio there is nothing centralized radio network controller kind of thing that is present in 4G whereas we have radio network controller in 3G that is all our base stations for which our mobile is used to connect will again connect to something centralized controller called as RNC 
that has been removed in 4G. So it is a distributed radio network. So there is no centralized unit which takes decision for all the networks. All the networks are intelligent and self-sufficient and they operate in a distributed fashion. For 3G networks, we see a high latency because there are multiple nodes in between. Whereas the number of nodes has been decreased in 4G networks, there are only two nodes that is node B and packet gateway. Whereas our data has to travel over four nodes in 3G in order to be able to reach the internet service provider. Those are node B, radio network controller, SGSN, GGSN. These acronyms will find out for, for each each and everything in the final appendix that we'll be going to share. And coming to network side, there is a separate circuit switch network and a separate packet switch network to support voice and data in 3G. Whereas in 4G, there is only one single network which takes care of both voice and data and all the data is comprised into a IP packet format. So it is well optimized to suit the network requirements for data. So it's called as all IP packet core network AIPN and the packet core network is called as EPC. Whereas 3G networks are only compliant with themselves that is 3GBP technologies only. Whereas 4G standard is being designed to interoperate between 3GPP as well as non 3GPP technologies. Let us see the complete picture of the various key elements in the LTE network. So an LTE network is broadly classified into two bigger segments that is EPC and EUTRAN as we have seen previously. So EUTRAN contains something called as E Note B that is Evolve Note B. These are nothing but the base station that our mobile is going to connect or, not, or the, our mobile connects to. So there is something called as MME, SGW and PGW in EPC, Evolved Packet Core. MME stands for Mobility Management Entity. As the name suggests, it manages with the mobility and it also takes care of UE identity and security parameters. S Gateway stands for Serving Gateway. It's, it Uh, it is the node that is present in the core network. It is one of the EPC. It is actually the EPC interface to LTE and EUTRAN. That is, it is the first network from which for for which E node B communicates on the user plane. Packet gateway. Packet gateway communicates with S date S gateway to get the data of the user and transmit to the real packet data network that is outside which is internet and 